And we're going to be starting off um, with uh, Diane Darras, who is the International Water Association president. And she's going to be uh, kind of setting the scene for us. But we'll start with this one now and jump right in. Uh, Diane, do you want to get us started and, and discuss uh, how the water sector is mobilizing towards climate action? And why, why is it something that we need to be doing? And what, how have we evolved to arrive to this point? Thank you very much, Jose. Yeah, uh, I think it's, um, it's very important to remind uh, everybody that IWA, the International Water Association, which is a scientific and knowledge uh, network, has always been, uh, without knowing it, working on, on uh, mitigation, climate mitigation, because energy is one of the uh, important costs for water treatment plants and wastewater. So at the beginning, we were trying to reduce the cost of the water by reducing the energy, but that is just the indirect impact on climate change. Then we discover that in the wastewater plant, for example, you, you produce CO2 and you produce um, carbon um, you method and more and worst uh, nitrous oxide. So that is really something that we discover little by little. And since uh, now 10 years, IWO has been um, working with uh, some people in order to be able to evaluate how much the impact on climate change uh, due to our treatment plants and wastewater plants. So that is very important because if you are not able to measure, and I think we are going to come back to the War Clean program, if you can't measure, you can't really change your attitude and change the way you work. But I think the um, looking at reducing the cost, then suddenly looking at mitigation. And now we go further, but maybe we we'll speak that later on. We try to also uh, adapt. We, we need to be more resilient. So it, there is an, um, another way also, probably the water wise city uh, program where you try to say, well, whatever climate change will arrive. So how do we uh, adapt? climate change. So I think we, we are going more and more deeper on that. And of course, the uh, smart cities or the smart online system can help a lot on optimization. And probably it's also what will happen with COVID and, and the post-COVID uh, way of working. We are going to work more on online and things like that. So I think it's important to remember the way where we went. First, reducing energy. Second, really measuring and, and reducing the uh, green gas um, uh, emissions, and now trying to re adapt and reduce uh, the use of water because it's a way of adapting. If I can sum up a bit uh, the, the history of, of, uh, of what we do and what we did. 